thank you everybody for joining us this morning for our latest um, summer session for the Tutors Association. We have Matthew Kernier joining us who is going to be delivering an amazingly interesting talk on have you mastered safe recruitment for your tutoring company, which I am sure we're all going to get a lot from. Um, I'm really excited for it. So thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much, Sam, and thank you very much for having me. And I'd also like to introduce uh, my colleague, Noor. Uh, Noor's going to give us a bit of a wave there. And Noor uh, also works with me as uh, my Director of Operations here at Capital Tuition Group. So uh, as Sam said, my name is Matthew, uh, and I'm the founder and CEO of a, of a tutoring company called Capital Tuition Group. Uh, we're going to be nine years old in September, so we've been around for a little bit now, and we're also uh, approved uh, tuition partners with the National Tutoring Programme. So I'm going to move very, very quickly uh, on to the first question that I have. But what I want to sort of keep in your mind, what I want to bring to your mind, is this particular unit of time, eight hours eight hours. Eight hours is 480 minutes. That is 28,800 seconds. Now, what on earth could you do given eight hours? What on earth could you do? Well, I uh, have a couple of ideas in my head and I actually asked Google, what can you do in eight hours? And Google told me the following. You can fly from New York to Paris in eight hours. Uh, you can also watch the entire trilogy of the original films of the Star Wars, including the full credits and some popcorn breaks in between. And if I have eight hours sleep, then I'm very, very happy and I'm feeling uh, much refreshed. Eight hours. I'm going to keep that number in your mind before, um, before we move on. So I want to ask you all a question and I really encourage you to add uh, all of your comments into the chat, please. And the question that I want to ask you is, is why are you here today? What is it that the, the, the title of this sort of spotlight has prompted you to sign up and attend, for which I'm very grateful, by the way. Um, so please pop in the chat now. Why is it that you are here today? Uh, and we'll, we'll wait for some of the responses as they come through. I'm gonna type in here. So you know where to type. Okay, I want to make sure that we're not missing something important in the current processes. Okay, fantastic, Lisa. Any other ideas, please? Why are you here today? Thank you so much, Lisa, for contributing there. Reassurance that our practice is compliant. Excellent. Couple more. We are working really hard to ensure that everything is in place for our tutors. I want to be sure we have covered everything. Yes. So lots of people are here because there is um, an element of, of, of fear uh, that, that we're not doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. Now, that's where we are. I want to check best practice with other providers and tutoring companies. Thank you, Victoria. So obviously there's, there's a real concern or there's a real sort of um, focus and energy and quite rightly so to, okay, am I doing everything that we are supposed to be doing? One of the things about the tutoring sector is that it's both marvelous in that it's unregulated, but that is a double-edged sword. It means that we can kind of do what we want, but it also on the flip side means that there's not necessarily some structures or uh, precedents that have been put in place that we can necessarily follow. Got some uh, more here. Uh, so that I safeguard children. I want to have an idea about what qualities uh, tutors should have. I want to know better about prep practices. This is fantastic. All the answers I was looking for, lovely. So now the next thing is um, I want to pose another question. And again, ideas in the chat. If you had a magic wand that was to solve your safeguarding queries or questions or problems or processes, if you had a magic wand and you were granted one wish, what would that be? what would that wish look like so i'm just going to wait a couple of minutes whilst people add a few little ideas into this chat here no you can put a you can put a dream in there as well put your wish in there What real wish would you have if you could wave a magic wand and solve your uh, 
<laughs> so you have to answer the door with the question. So the question now is, if you had a magic wand and you were granted one wish, what wish would you grant yourself to solve all of your safer recruitment dilemmas? <clears throat> yes, indeed, Victoria. So many tutors don't have their um, themselves signed up to the uh, update service, which just causes quite a few problems. Any others? Just wait one more minute. Truth and honesty. Interesting. Oh, that's a really lovely perspective there, Helen. Thank you. A checklist for consistency approach. I wish we could automatically check passports and other IDs, but more suitable tutors answered my ads. That's a recruitment problem there, but yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, this is really, really useful information for us to have. Some tutors don't want to pay for the DBS check. I know, I don't understand why. That's your responsibility, tutors, I agree with you. Okay, so, Clearly you're here because you want to make sure that you're in uh, your uh, reaching best practice. You've got an ideal that you want to achieve. You've really got a, an ideal that you want to achieve in your mind's eye. Um, but there are some blocks and there are some challenges. And these are just some of the ones that I've listed down below. One of the ones that we found when we were becoming um, approved partners under the NTP was the amount of compliance that the, tu that the NTP wanted from us was so high that our practice now takes about eight hours to onboard one tutor. And that is if everything is going smoothly. Victoria, I'm seeing you nod. Uh, uh, you, you, you can, you're already feeling that eight hours, that's a lot of manpower, uh, human power. So human resources goes on to my next one, know-how. You were here because sometimes we just don't know. And there'll be some checks that we have now put in place at Capital Tuition Group that I've never even heard of. Um, and I thought, well, this is absolutely ridiculous, but but it's important. Consistency, we've already had consistency mentioned. This is another block. How do we do this again and again and again? How do we repeat it such that our system is robust and reliable? Those systems, what are they? Where are they? There are some out there. Some are exorbitantly expensive. Others don't really do what we want them to do specifically. And of course, money can also be a challenge because we are but small and medium enterprises, unless I'm talking to some of you who are you know, uh, having a, a revenue of plus five million, in which case, uh, let's have a conversation and a coffee. Um, but there, there, money can be sometimes a bit of a, a, a challenge as well. So our aim today is to get you feeling confused, going from feeling confused, stressed, a bit fraught, all the way to being zen like the, the the lovely backdrop of the, of the of the stairs and the sofa and the bamboo that we had earlier on uh, i can't remember whose backdrop that was but that's what we're trying to get to today and the reason why we're talking about um about safer recruitment and why we're doing this is very very important i'm going to start off with a little anecdote um this is a little anecdote that stems back from uh, about five years ago so just before the pandemic and i had a a, a really lovely um client uh, in Sloan Square, they were quite a high net worth individual and they had a, a barrage of tutors from us, including me, uh, I'm a science specialist. And then they also asked for an RS and history tutor. Uh, and the RS and history tutor was sort of, as I was leaving, they would arrive and it was going very smoothly and everything was fine for about two or three months. Until when I go up for a session, uh, I turn up for a session and the, and the, tu and the, and the mum says to me, well, listen, my daughter's feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And I said, oh my gosh, why? So, well, because the, the, the history and, and, and RS tutor keeps insisting that we shut the door uh, so they can have quiet time. And I was like, um, oh, really? Uh, okay. So I went back to my history and RS tutor and I said, is this the case? And he, he flatly denied it. Um, and so then I got accounts written by him. I got accounts written by uh, the, 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 the daughter and the, and the family. Um, and this was back in the day where my safeguarding recruitment was far less robust than it is today. And so it threw it me into an absolute panic. The situation was very, very amicably, uh, amicably resolved. Um, and there was a little bit of misunderstanding on one particular incident, so it was all fine. But had that blown up and had that been a serious safeguarding event, I'm not sure how well protected Capital Tuition Group would have been. And I'm not sure how well protected the, the daughter that we were tutoring would have been. 
So why are we doing this? That's one example. In the early years of Capital Attrition Group, and I'm talking nine years ago now, and I don't know how old some of your companies are. If actually, if you could pop into the chat how many years you guys have been operating, that would be really, really useful. Um, just to give me a sense. But when I started Capital Attrition Group, DBSs didn't exist. They were called CRBs. And the general sense of a CRB check was about, you know, three years. It was it was valid for three years. When I my uh, history, well, my sort of background is as a teacher. So when I was recruited as a teacher, I had my one CRB check done. I stayed at that school for over five years. Never again was a check done again. Center since 2015, however, been running since 2020, four years. Okay. And even in this time, so I've been going nine years, we've got five years, four years. This is really in interesting information. So thank you for, for answering these questions. The advancements in safer recruitment have gone through the roof. The tutoring sector as a whole has also seen quite a large amount of legislative change. We've all experienced the whole problem with the EAEB and they were only two or three years old. Legislation is coming down the track, it's coming down the track relatively fast, so we need to be ready. What we don't want to do is remain stuck in the in the protocols of four or five years ago uh, and, and be the dinosaur. That is not the ideal. So, actually, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say one more thing here is that when Nora and I uh, had been finally approved uh, to be uh, national uh, tutoring program providers, uh, we actually. Uh, failed our first audit we got audited every single term and one of our uh fa well, we failed on our first audit on a couple of elements of our safeguarding because they were so 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 thorough and we got on a call with the lead sort of arbitrator and the lead uh, guy who, who who was um approving people and we brainstormed and we had to do this and put that into place and all the rest of it and after about an hour and a half when beads of sweat were appearing on my forehead and Norse to-do list had gone from three items to 35 items. Um, he said, I know it's difficult. This guy, he peered down the barrel of the lens like this and with one eye and he said, I know it's difficult, but there's one thing that I will not apologize for, he said. And I said, oh gosh, what's this? He said, I will not apologize for keeping our young children safe. Now, it was very funny at the time and it was sort of a bit of a comic relief for, for, for Nora and I, but actually he's right. If we are sending tutors out to teach our young uh, children and young people, then they have to, we have to make sure that they are properly safer recruit, safe, you know, safely recruited. Okay, let's move on. I want you to know straight off the bat, you're probably doing a really damn good job already. You're probably doing a lot of it. There are so many resources out there. There's so much know-how accessible and, you know, not least for the fact that the Tutors Association is putting this sort of stuff in place and these spotlights, etc. There are lots and lots of tools. So whatever happens throughout this, the rest of this conversation, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't do this. Oh my gosh, I don't do that. Oh my gosh, I don't do this either. Panic not. All of it is fixable, I promise you. From someone who has gone through that extremely steep learning curve, having to be compliant with the high, high, high levels of national tutoring program, um, if I can do it, and if Nora and I can do it, I promise you, you all to, uh, you all can as well. So, <clears throat> let us begin in earnest with the process. Is what we call it here at Capital Tuition Group. We call it the process. Um, now we split the process down into three main chunks. The first one is the whole application and the interview and all the tracking that is involved in that. The second phase, the second part of the process is all the information acquisition, the screening and the vetting of all of that information. And then the last one is tutor training. Now I'm gonna put training with a pinch of salt and there's a bit of a disclaimer here. Under EA and EB rules, employment agency under employment versus employment business rules, we're not strictly allowed to train tutors. However, there are some certain things that you must make sure your tutors have done or at least acknowledge existence of or have read, namely KCSIE. We will come back to that in just a moment. So let's uh, knuckle down into the first portion of the process. 
Shape and recruitment starts way, way before you've even met the tutor. You probably are already aware of this. One of the first things that we were picked up uh, on at the National Tutoring uh, Programme was when we were becoming uh, an approved provider was they were like, right, so where's your job description? Now, I never really put much thought into that. I was like, well, I just need a tutor. Everybody knows what a tutor is. And no, the answer is you have to have a job description when you are advertising. It might help with your recruitment. Um, uh, I don't know. But you have to have a job description. Uh, and the reason why you have to have a job description is that when you do finally bring that candidate into interview, you have to have some predetermined, scorable fields that will measure the competency of that tutor against the job description that you advertised for. And of course, some of you may have not just tutors under your umbrella, you might have admin staff, you might have a tutor recruiter, you might have other people, they all have to have job description that's clearly outlined and then an interview sheet with scorable predetermined fields that you measure that candidate against whilst you're in the interview so that's the first one that number one we're moving anti-clockwise now through to the cv check lots of you who do your recruitment will probably be reading lots of um will probably be reading lots of cvs for me it is the most boring task of my day they're all the same they all say the same sorts of things uh, I've, i'm seeing some people smiling but it is important to read employment gap you need to check for an employment gap specifically you also need to see if they have lived and or worked abroad at any time in their past now the the parameter or the metric that would determine whether we would go and look at that a little bit further the whole living and uh, working abroad is whether they have lived or worked abroad for over three months within the last five years if they have if that answer is yes then we need to delve into lots of further recruitment of, of safer recruitment i'll come on to that uh, later on okay now we're moving into the interview they've they've, they've written a, a fabulous job description they've written they've, they've applied for your job description they've got great cv they might have done a, a beautiful covering letter you think yes this candidate is absolutely smashing let's bring them into interview so you bring them into interview whilst it's not uh, imperative they do recommend that during safer recruitment of the in the interview phase there is more than one interviewer that's the first thing. If you can, if you can spare that person, if you've got somebody else, great. Bearing in mind that, and um, I know the challenges behind that. If you have a small team, uh, dedicating two people in your team for a one-hour interview or forty-minute interview, that you know that's two people. Uh, that's two people hours. That, that's quite a lot of time expenditure. And then I mentioned to you those scorable fields. Now, they, they ask you to have a bank of set questions. There are some questions that are non-negotiable, must be asked in absolutely every single interview. And if you want to know what those questions are, come back to me after this, after this little session and, and, and we can go through those. And you can have a bank of other sort of uh, optional questions. Again, must have scorable fields. Um, and then, you know, you've got a little bit of leeway as to how the interview is navigated and you, you can go with the flow. ID checks. What we do in our interviews is that we ask, most of them take place online, as I'm sure a, a lot of them will uh, take place online for you as well. But what we ask is that they bring to the interview three forms of ID. Inevitably, one is a passport. Inevitably, another one is a driver's license. Most people have those two. And a and other form of ID, which could be a utility bill, with the exception of a phone, uh, phone, a mobile phone contract, um, you know, water, gas, electricity, uh, or something like that, a mortgage statement, um, birth certificate, marriage certificate. These are all forms of ID. And what we do is just get them to show the screen uh, there. Alternatively, they send it to us in the post. We take a scan of it. We upload it to the system, and we send their uh, their things back, uh, their paperwork back. That's long. It's arduous. It's admin heavy. But it's what we needed to do. And we think that actually um, there are some platforms out there that can sort of verify the validity of a, of a passport or something like that, as Noel was saying. 
So there's the digital ID check in the interview. Let's move swiftly on. We have to ask about several things. We have to ask whether they've been lived or worked abroad. We have to ask about employment gaps. Let's face it, guys. Anything that is written on a CV has just been written by the candidate. Then they could have made something spectacular up, um, which they might have done. So asking those questions, digging down, digging down, digging down is really important. And then when we were uh, going through the NTP approval, they were like, so what do you ask them in terms of uh, safer recruitment in the interview? And at the time I was like, I, um, I asked, I asked them if they know how to spell it. I, I don't know, I didn't know. So we have to ask them some questions about safer recruitment, e.g. a scenario. What would you do if dot, dot, dot? Uh, when was your last tutor tra uh, safeguarding training, dot, dot, dot? How familiar are you with prevent, dot, dot, dot? All of those sorts of things. Um, let's say that they've done a smashing sterling job in their, uh, in their interview and you're going, yep, yeah, I'm going to accept them. I'm going to ask them to onboard. Now, some people onboard earlier, uh, uh, before the interview or after the interview, it kind of doesn't really matter, but there are some absolutely essential bits of paperwork that you must send them through. One is you have to send them through your safer recruitment policy and what happens when, um, a safeguarding incident comes up. You also have to send them what we call a working together policy and then a data sharing agreement um, that's left to do with safeguarding, but is an absolute uh, it's an absolute must, really. And then key information document. And moving on now to point five, which is self suitability and somewhere in this uh, early stages of the process in step one, you have to ask a tutor. Are you suitable? to be a tutor and to work with young with young people uh, or children. And they have to go, yes, I declare that I am suitable to work with young people. That's step one of the process. <clears throat> Let's move on to step two of the process, uh, which is information acquisition, screening and vetting. Again, I've got five stages, I'm gonna whiz through these. We've already mentioned the ID. Now, I said that there, often it's the passport, it's the driver's license and A and other. The passport is really important because it kills several birds with one stone. As part of the National Tutoring Programme, we were uh, mandated to ensure that we verified everybody's right to work status in the UK. Now, I'm not going to go into if you're using uh, tutors abroad at this stage. These are, this is the sort of, uh, that's got a, that's another chapter uh, another point but if you're using sort of british uh, tutors you have to check their right to work so if they have an irish passport or if they have a british passport they automatically get a right to work if they have a n other passport then the tutor will have to provide you with what we call a right to work share code now, a right to work share code is delivered by the Home Office to them, so they should have a copy of that. They will then give it to you, and it's a code that you can plug into the Home Office and say, oh, yes, it's, they've got a right to work. But caution, these right to work share codes can sometimes expire. So you need to make sure, uh, the third point there I've got under ID and right to work is date checked and who checked. So that's what we call the who done it and when done it which means that somebody from your team in recruitment, on the recruitment side, has got to have gone, yes, I am, I don't know, Laura, for example, I, Laura, have declared that I've seen the ID check and I've done it on the uh, 23rd of July, 2024. So that's what uh, we have to do. The date check and who checks, or the who done it and when done it, will appear again and again and again throughout this whole entire time. The DBS, ah, the famous DBS, you've often you know that we have to have an enhanced dbs we've always got to collect the issue date and the certificate number now if there is anything that i leave you with today let it be this you have once i got a dbs at capital division group i was like yeah great they've got a dbs i'm like yeah it looks clear brilliant fantastic no 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 absolutely not you have to look at one very specific box, which is the children's barred listing box. And you have to do a who checked and a date check on that. And I'm going to, this is my tip. This is the crucial tip. I started looking at this once we'd been pulled up short by the National Tutoring Programme. And they were like, no, 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 this is not done properly. And I was like, oh, is it not? Oh my gosh, why? And I would look and some boxes would have inside the children's bar listing box would have 
not requested. Other boxes would have none recorded. And I had never, ever in my life noticed the difference. Which basically means if it is not requested, that DBS is worthless for your purposes. So it must be requested. If it says none recorded, you can breathe a sigh of relief and you go, ah, oh, goodness, that's good, brilliant. They're fine to go and work with young people and uh, children. Of course, you have to put them on, well, you don't have to put them on the update service, but as I was mentioning earlier on, you know, even the TTA, and Sam, you can remind me when, when this was put in place, but the TTA put in place as of a one year rule relatively recently. Yeah, so all of our members need to have a DBS either within the last year, but then also prove that you're on the update service. Um, and then recently as well, TTA have invested in our internal processes. So now we are checking all of your DBSs daily. Um, so if you tell us that you've got a DBS and you're on the update service, we will then be informed of any changes to your DBS um, practically in real time, which is really helpful. Yeah, that's super, super helpful. And it's sort of the standard that needs to be sort of um, spread across all uh, tutoring providers, really. Um, so, yes. You, ideally being on the update service and a minimum of a year, otherwise we ask them to, 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 to fork out for a DBS. I know it's expensive, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Um, and you also, if they are on the DBS, and we do checks on them very, very frequently to check, make sure that nothing's um, untoward has happened in them since the last time we checked, we have to have written down somewhere the candidates or the tutor's permission for us to check. If you don't have that permission, you can't do it, and that needs to be on black and white. Once you've done the check, it's a when done it and who done it. And that is, again, on your side, admin side, who done that check and when that check was done. Let's move swiftly on to teacher prohibition and online checks. These were some of the checks I was like, what are they? I've never even heard of a teacher prohibition check until I'd hit the uh, until I'd gone into the um, into the uh, NTP. And I'm, I've got a background of a teacher. Um, a teacher prohibition check, uh, that's slightly difficult to get hold of at the moment. Uh, and the reason why we're able to do it is because the NTP just provides us with the blacklist of teachers who are on that teacher prohibition list. So we just go, uh, no, they're not on there. Great, so that's fine. Now, there are other um, providers out there that do it. They can be a little bit pricey, um, ranging anywhere from £7 a check to sort of £15 a check. Um, you then get a little certificate, as what, but all you need to do is you only need to do it once. Um, and then you do an online check. Now, an online check is literally trying to ascertain a snapshot in time of the tutor's status in the uh, online world. So you can check their names on social medias and uh, in search engines and as long as you feel that nothing too crazy crazy is 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 happening you know a drunken night uh, when they've just graduated from university in ibiza that's probably fine uh, if there's an article about them in the sun about something a slightly um unflavorsome then probably <laughs> have a, a little question mark there so that's what those two checks are let's move on to the references which i am sure everybody feels is probably the bane of their life because you can send out a myriad of reference uh, requests and nothing will come back but your tutor should not be going out to deliver any work on your behalf if there aren't two reference checks completed and re-received again you have to ask permission from your tutor to go and um to go and, uh, and chase your referees and there are some things in the reference checks that are absolutely imperative the first one is you have to ask the, the referee how long have you known this candidate how long have you known this tutor the other question that you have to ask them uh, is do you know of any reason why this candidate is not suitable to work with anybody under the age of 18 can be a tick can be a yes or it could be a no whatever it might be um, that's that that's important um, and then you've got the who done it and the when done it check as well uh, I'm going to ask Noor to help me clarify one of these thing, points for me, and I think I've got it right, but there are some self-declaration checks that are also needing to be done. So that is point number five. The self-suitability declarations, because I've already mentioned it, but I've brought it back here uh, just for, for emphasis sake. But there is also a fitness to work check, which basically is um, 
uh, are you fit and healthy to do this check uh, to, to, to do this tutoring work sorry um and if not what can we do to find reasonable adjustments or accommodations for you to be able to do that work once we've got that check then we did we, we date it and we um uh, and we sign who did it now there are two declarations uh that i want to sort of because people get confused between the two you've got the self-suitability which is yeah I, I believe that i'm appropriate and responsible enough to do this work but then there's another declaration which is a declaration that i every all the information that i provided you lot with is true to the best of my knowledge so you ask them one question is are you appropriate for this job Yes, I believe that I'm appropriate for this job. Then they give you everything they've got that, that you want from them, you know, biogs and qualifications and all the rest of it. And then you have to ask them, and this has to be recorded. Is this all true? Do you believe to the best of your knowledge that this is the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth, for want of a better phrase? I'm going to move on to the third step of the process, which is slightly lighter. Um, and again, please bring this word training with a pinch of salt because i know that they're sort of we're flying close to the wire when it comes to training particularly if you're an ea business kcsie changes every year pretty much they always sort of public well the last year certainly they published their their new updates about three months before they uh, officially published it so we had time to prepare it every single year all of your tutors have to declare that they have read part one of kcsie that's standard moving on to point number two it is sort of our job as tut as providers of tutoring to make sure that our tutors go through annual safeguarding training now you can do this in two ways the first is a lot of these tutors will probably, well, certainly a lot of our, because we only use qualified teachers of capital tuition group, loads of them are working at schools anyway. And so in September, first, second of September, they will redo a bunch of uh, safeguarding training through their schools. But there is no evidence of that. There's no completion certificate. There's no nothing. They've just done the training. So one way to do it is ask them to send you any within a year date certificates of completion of any form of safeguarding. That's one way of doing it. I tell you now, that is like herding cats. It is painful, it is slow, and you're never going to get a complete thing. And no, there's nothing uniform or standardized there at all uh, from what we've, we've experienced. So what we've done is we've gone, OK, here's an NSPCC video. Here's another NSPCC video. Here's a quick Google form, um, multiple choice question that's got five or six questions on. Please watch the videos and click the right answers. Click submit, boom, 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 we've done it. They have now been safeguarded, refreshed uh, for, for that year. Now, one of the things, one of the areas that I want to talk to you specifically about for tutor training is the following, and that is an SCR. When the NTP asked us to provide a comprehensive SCR, I was like, well, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just give them tutor cruncher. Tutor Cruncher, I uh, don't, most of you are probably aware of what Tutor Cruncher is, but it's where you store all of your tutors and the information about them and you can match them to a job and then you can release the job and they record their hours through that, that, that platform. And that's called Tutor Cruncher. Now, an SCR stands for Single Central Register or Single Central Record. And it is basically a giant database of all of the information of your tutors. It's really blooming useful. We didn't really have one before because I just thought Tutor Cruncher could do it. Uh, the NTP uh, saw us straight and said that's absolutely uh, not appropriate. And that's because that's not what Tutor Cruncher's job is. I advocate Tutor Cruncher up to the eyeballs. I think it's a fabulous pl platform. We use it, but it's not there to be a single central register. That's not part of their functionality. So keep a database. Uh, there are lots of pitfalls and challenges with that. If you want help with that, please, please do uh, sort of reach out with any questions. And if you've got any ideas, you're already doing a CSR, uh, an SCR, sorry. Um, please, if you've got any ideas that you want to share as best practice, pop that in the chat uh, as we go. Whew, that's it. That's the last phase of the process. 
So I want to ask you all, <laughs> how are you feeling now that I've just talked at you for the last 20 minutes about the process? Please, please, please type in one, two or three, or if you're able to do an emoji in the chat, please pop your, uh, your answers now in there. Uh, number one, are you feeling frazzled, overwhelmed or alarmed? Number two, you're like, yeah, I'm okay. It's all good. It's all good. Or are you under three, which is like, oh, I have got this sorted. Okay. Lisa, slightly overwhelmed. Okay. Thank you for that honesty. Really, really uh, wonderful to have that. Victoria, two. Okay. So we've got middle of the road. Have we got anyone who's feeling like they are completely on top of the world and that they know exactly what they're doing? And I'm going to urge you more, urge you again to pop your, go on, be honest, tell you how you're feeling. It's fine. It's fine. We've got this. We're all here together. Any more? No, how are you feeling? You're feeling okay. Thanks, Helen. That's great. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let's <clears throat> be sure that we're on the right track. Good, Sarah. That's wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. Brilliant. Okay. I'm going to move on. Inspired, but a bit worried, Catherine. Okay, well done. Lovely honesty there. That's really encouraging. Thank you. Um, right. If you are feeling a little bit worried, I say this to you. You have got this. It is scary. It does feel overwhelming. Um, but if I bring you back to my little anecdote of my uh, tutor that went to um, tutor one of our clients in Sloan Square, what I feel really, really more calmer about or at peace about is the fact that the capital tuition group of today, now, is definitely looking after the capital tuition group of tomorrow. And what I mean by that is that we, because we were confronted with the NTP and reaching that level of compliance, it meant that we really had to sort of pull our socks up and I have to say that I had already sort of already put, buried my head in the sand and gone, oh gosh, it'll be fine. Most of my tutors work in schools anyway, so it's, it's, all, it's all fine. But actually, my level of responsibility as the leader of Capital Tuition Group extends far beyond that. So I just completely warmly encourage you and invite you to make sure that the you of today looks after the you of tomorrow because you have no idea what tiny, tiny little drop of a safeguard and concern could ripple out into something that's far far more um potentially dangerous particularly as you spent loads and loads of time years hours sweat blood tears these, these are your companies these are your babies you pruned and nurtured your reputations to such an extent that you want to make sure that, that is maintained and continued so in the chat I'm going to invite you now. I don't know how we're doing for time. We've got five minutes. Actually, I'm going to do this. This is a little quiz that you can do if you like. And Noor's going to pop that in the chat for us. It's a quiz of about 30 questions long. I want you to really honestly, in the best way that you know how, honestly answer them. And it will give you a flavor of how well you're doing across a variety of your safer recruitment practices. So I'm going to leave you five minutes, and we'll, we'll terminate this at 48. Have a go. It will give you a bit of a flavor as to the sort of strengths and weaknesses that you might be encountering. Good luck. Away you go. And at 48, I will come back round. If you finished it, that's fine too. Uh, and then I'll just have a couple more things and we're open for questions. Is that, is that all right? Is that the right timing, time frame, Sam? Fabulous. Yeah, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So go ahead and take the quiz. Answer it to the best of your knowledge and the best way you know how. <clears throat>
three minutes left. If you could try and refresh the page, Sarah, that might help you. Fingers crossed that should work. Yeah, mine seems to have gotten stuck as well. I'm just going to check what the issue is. Okay. Oh, okay. no. Oh, hold on. Mine's come back now. No, I've just been. Victoria, have yours gotten stuck on the question, or are you fin have you completed it? Stuck on a question, but it's um, started uh, started going again. Oh, okay, we're all good. <laughs> Same. <laughs> was it? Was it the interview question? Yes, and yeah. it one it one it wouldn't let me answer. Okay, yeah, I think it might have just been a. Um, an issue with the actual app, possibly. Okay, when we hit 11.47, just continue uh, on in the background, uh, and then uh, we'll open the floor for some for some questions. Um, I've got a couple more things I, I, I want to sort of share with you, uh, and then uh, we'll be pretty much there. So whilst you're carrying on and finalizing your quizzes, um, what I do want to say is it is our responsibility to make sure that we're safely recruiting all of our tutors. But you are in a really, really, really good space and time to do this. There are loads of resources out there. And our aim is to get you to be calm, confident, knowing that you've got the, um, the assurance that all of your tutors that you're sending out are checked up to the eyeballs and you can breathe easy basically so once you have finished and i'll encourage us to all come uh, onto camera and then on mic as well i'm really happy to uh, field any questions that there might be and launch a bit of a discussion if there are any sort of burning uh, queries that we have amongst us all so once you've got your scores, once you finish that, if there are any questions, really happy to take those and we'll do that sort of verbally through, through cameras and mics rather than through the chat. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for coming on there. Have you completed your, have you completed your quiz? Yes, I did. I managed to unstick it. <laughs> oh, you managed to unstick it. Excellent. Um, and, and, and how are you feeling about, how are you feeling about the results? Yeah, fine. So it got 80%. And there were thing, the things that picked up on it were the things that I'd made notes and thought, actually, we just need to tighten that up or just do this slightly differently. So it's really helpful just to just to think about the process and what bits we can just, you know. Perfect. A little bit more. What in particular do you think you might be implementing a little bit more? So when we have our interviews, um, our registration assistant gives them a call, but it's not like a formal set of questions. So we have a general kind of idea of what we're asking, but actually we yeah. just formalize that process and make sure our notes match up. Um, yeah. But that's a quick, easy fix. So yeah, it yeah. is. It is a quick, yeah. easy fix. And, and you from, are you from Owl? Is that right? Uh, it's homeschool tutoring. Homeschool tutoring. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Great. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Any yeah. other questions? Not from me. Thank you. It was really helpful. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from anybody else? I can't have been that thorough, surely. <laughs> yes, Helen, hello. 
Oh, you're still on mute, Helen. We're going to see if we can unmute you from our side. Oh, no, we can't. You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Ah, brilliant. Right. So, sorry about that. Um, yes, I just wanted to say, just to be up straight with you, why I was doing this session mm. is that I'm a tutor. I don't in employ tutors, but I thought it could be useful to know from a tutoring agency's point of view, you know, yes. um, what's required, hence, you know, what I said about qualities in tutors or, or, or what have you. So that, that was it. So that was, um, I think that was useful to me as a tutor because, yes, loads of these things seem ugh, such a drag and so fussy. And I'm just thinking what all this about. But when you explain it from your point of view, it's actually very useful, as most things are from the other point, person's point of view. So thank you for that um it, it it has been a useful session for oh, good 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 well no, no you're you're more than welcome and i think I, I presume you're already on the update service are you um well <laughs> i thought i was but it was because i was um uh that the college i had been with had done the dbs i completely forgot that i was supposed to upgrade it within three weeks so that yeah. was the bit i didn't do so now i know that's what i have to do so yes that's on the list no and and the thing is how interesting that that example comes out that's a real life example that happens all of the time and so um we've got about 200 tutors on our books so when you're dealing with 200 tutors whose dbs's go out of date or that their um the direct debit that they've set up with the update service uh breaks because their card got stolen they forgot that it was on against that card that they made the payment every th every 12 months for 13 pounds there's always something that, that goes on so for, for tutoring companies as a whole but you've seen even even for you you've gone oh oh I, my dbs because it's i don't know who else every single year i forget my mot is due every single year i forget my mot is due it's the same thing with the dbs um, so you, you 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 know you've you've highlighted a perfect example. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Any um, other questions? Oh, sorry, I'm being I'm being very cheeky here. But since there's the opportunity, uh, okay, um, just to say, could you say what your what your tutor agency is called again, and can I send in my details to you at some point? <laughs> but otherwise if that's not if that's not a kosher question it's fine i can no 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 I, th I think i well done i commend you for, for for being brave enough to do so so i'll it's uh, capital tuition group uh mm -hmm. and no can you just type in the link that um helen would need <clears throat> uh, oh thank you thank you very much yeah no worries at all any other questions from the from the board um, Lisa has one in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen that one. Sorry? There's there's one question in the chat from Lisa. Oh, oh Lisa, sorry, 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 sorry. Will you or TTA be providing templates or self with declaration, declaration of how you believe uh, all your information is correct? Um, I don't think there are any plans to do so uh, as of yet. Um, I think this is basically the short answer. If you want a, a hand uh, implementing that, then let us know. Sarah. Just a question about the daily DBS update checks. I have found a service that will do that for us. Is there, does the TTA also offer that service for our tutors? Yeah, so if your tutors are members, um, then we will check, um, well, we do check all of the update um, details that we have on on record daily um i don't think there are any plans to expand that kind of like as an additional service for corporates for their tutors um okay. at the moment i can definitely talk to julius about it and see what we can do but okay. i think at the moment the best option probably is to um encourage them to use the um the discount rate that we've got in terms of um corporate members tutors joining up yeah. um they'll get their first year um for quite a considerable discount um and then once they're on the update service that will be checked daily and does it alert us if they're one of our tutors can we does it alert us or does it just alert yourselves 
Um, so it alerts Julius daily. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not fully clued in on what Julius's okay. no kind problem. of processes are from that point. Yeah. Um, definitely if you drop him an email on either info at or general manager, then he'll be able to um, have a chat with you about that. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, can I ask the, can I ask the, the reason behind those questions from, from you? What are you thinking there? So I I don't know, lad. So we've um we've been talking to qualified tutor because they will offer us daily up you know DBS checks, and that's something we're moving towards because we do a lot of local authority and school work, and I just want to ensure that we're really up to where we need to be with it. So just really looking around and seeing there's another another option and and what that might look like really. So. Um, okay yeah. interesting i think they're still in the process of building it but it's definitely um yeah they're already for tta members that's great thank you i'll reach out to them that's really helpful thank you no you're about to say something there i was going to say and is this platform through qualified tutors or is it just an, another independent platform that you found it's through qualified tutor okay fine 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 um matthew there's a couple more Request. Uh, yes, I've seen. Uh, what do you do if a tutor refuses to complete a safeguarding qualification? <sighs> Interesting. Um, I don't know if I can say this because it's recorded. Coercion. I don't know. Uh, you, <laughs> if, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not completing that, then it will be completely up to you. To decide whether you're going to take them on i would say if they're refusing to do basic box down let me pose the question in a different way if they said to you well i'm not paying for dbs what would you do i wouldn't i wouldn't take them on as a tutor yeah exactly and we, have some, and we have had some people who don't you like oh no i'm not paying for a tutor you know i'm not paying for a dbs sometimes i've gone right well listen i, I really i really need to fill a, a a vacancy here so i'll go hard with you on this time but please make sure that you sign yourself up for the dbs but if they're going oh i'm not doing the safeguarding training i'm like it's literally three minutes of watching a video click a few yes no abc option answers and then you're done and if they're not doing that then you're probably best to avoiding that bullet in you know in, in in the long run no matter how good they might seem but a, a tutor is several things an excellent you know an excellent teaching practitioner who's got lots of pedagogy behind them but someone who's helpful and useful to work with as well right and if they're not the latter then that's we just mm. cut cut there um you've got a very right Sunday what's the, what's the situation for tutors outside the UK now, this is a very uh, interesting question, is that I, when we take on tutors who are from abroad or have lived and worked abroad, then um, Sunday, what we uh, require of them is what we call a police clearance check. Now, acquiring police clearance checks, the ease of requiring a police clearance check will vastly, vastly, vastly dif differ from country to country. <coughs> Are you sourcing your tutors from a specific uh, country, uh, Sunday? From Africa, okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> my knowledge, actually, so probably uh, John's uh, level of information about recruiting tutors from Africa would be far higher than mine. I don't know whether Sam might chime in there with any information that she has. Um, but, but basically getting a police clearance check or an equivalent of a DBS in their country, Nigeria specifically. Okay, fine. Uh, my knowledge sort of runs out there, I'm afraid. Uh, but if they were to deliver tutoring into the UK and you were delivering that tutor and they're delivering that tuition through you, then a, a, a police clearance check would be minimum, I would argue. There's all, um, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, so I generally don't deal with um, safeguarding, but Get My Grades are safeguarding lead. Um, I think she has, or there's either a website or like a, a UK government website whereby it says either who to contact or what you need for each country. Um, I just, I know of that because she's spoken about that in the past, but yeah, I, I'm sorry, you, I can try and look for it and then send you details afterwards, but otherwise, um, there is definitely something out there. Um, hopefully it's just in Google. Yeah, you can just Google it. Um, there is, I was, I was gonna say exactly the same thing. There's a list of organizations to reach out to 
per per, per country and um you can just reach out to them when it comes to um a lot of the tutors will probably have a police check if they have taught in africa um or taught in different countries so um so yeah you might be able to get it through the tutor or you may have to apply for one yourself thank you so much sarah for your contribution really thank you sarah i'll quickly whoosh through the rest of the questions uh how can qualifications be verified uh nor do you have an answer to that so it really depends on what you are looking for. So if you, um, it, this varies, and I think this is why we didn't really touch on it so much in this session. With qualifications, it's very uh, dependent on what you are looking for as, as your base qualification. Some people just take on A-level students, some people take on graduates, some people take on qualified teachers. So as long as you can put that or match that up with a job description that you put out there for your tutor role and match that up with the qualifications that you have and you can verify those. Um, if you wanted to go that extra mile um, and verify them digitally, if you wanted to, you can also do that. But you just need to make sure you do have a degree certificate or a QTS certificate, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, I hope that answers that one. And then the next one is, are your tutors responsible for providing their own resources or is it normal for a tuition company to provide some? Um, if you are operating under EA, uh, you cannot really interfere with any form of, um, of input in, in that manner. So that would then be entirely down to the tutor. With EB, if you're operating under EB, then you can um, accommodate that a little bit more. Um, I would argue, well, at Capital Attrition Group, we let most of the tutors, you know, deal with their, collect their own resources. We might point them to a few things. And we also gather tutors together from time to time so that they can share resources between them, particularly if they're doing a, a large project together um da, 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 hope that answers that one da, 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 no prop let mo okay i think we are 1202 which is pretty nice neat timing um there we are from me thank you so very much everybody for 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 coming and for attending uh, it's been uh, lovely to have you all i hope it's been useful if there are any other questions that you want to sort of uh, reach out and discuss further we more than welcome um, like I say, Matthew at capitaltuitiongroup.com is my email. Nor is also a font of knowledge. If you have any questions, nor at capitaltuitiongroup.com as well. Sam is likely to send out our things uh, in any case. Thank you very much indeed. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye now.